Before Jack Black started in high fidelity, saving Silverman, Shallow Hal, Orange County, King Kong, Nacho Libre, Kung Fu Panda, Tropic Thunder, Goosebumps, Jumanji, and everyone's favorite grade school musical comedy, School of Rock. Okay, who's got food in here? You're not gonna get in, Travel. I'm hungry. Before Jack Black and Kyle Gass were hitting the stage as comedy rock duo Tenacious D, dropping four albums, landing a TV show of their own, as well as a Tenacious D film. We're not a band. They calls me KG Solo Man 5000. And I am to keep it that way. <coughs> I'm out of here. Before Jack Black amassed a large social media following with over 67,000 followers on Twitter, as well as 3.4 million on Instagram at the time of this recording. Before Jack Black was a talk show darling eating habanero peppers with David Letterman and crushing the sacks of boom on Jimmy Fallon with the roots at his side. <laughs> Before Jack Black started his own YouTube channel, Jablinski Games, earning himself 2.7 million subscribers in under two weeks. This is my new YouTube channel, Jablinski. It's gonna be bigger than Ninja. It's gonna be bigger than PewDiePie. So what's Jablin, Jables? It's PewDiePie! When you think of iconic comedic actors from the 2000s, who comes to mind? Well, Ben Stiller, Tina Fey, Will Ferrell, and Dave Chappelle are some of the talents who've enjoyed longevity. Few have the versatility of Jack Black. Beginning his career at the age of just 13 in various commercials, well, Jack Black naturally climbed the ladder of Hollywood's tough as nails showbiz to become one of the most beloved comedic personalities of his generation. He stated, I like to be in films that I would like to see. I think of myself as an entertainment arsenal, like I have my acting bazooka and my music machete and you don't know what I'm gonna come at you with. Now like any actor, a couple of his films, they can be classified as, well, subpar, but few were able to light up the screen quite like Jack himself. Even when a role seems unfit for the actor, he certainly rises to the occasion. Take 2005's King Kong, for example. Now fresh off his success with Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, he could have hired any actor to play the role of eccentric filmmaker, Carl Denham. Now Jack was eventually cast and with his name on the bill, well, Peter Jackson's epic monster movie remake was arguably the most anticipated blockbuster of that year. Keep in mind, this was before Marvel took over that world. Just so you know. I want the cast and crew on the ship within the hour. No, Carl, you can't do this. Tell them the studio pressured us into an early departure. It's not ethical. What are they gonna do, sue me, huh? Kong ended up grossing close to $700 million worldwide. Now, believe me, for the mid-2000s, that was massive. While some critics consider Jack Black's role as a miscast, well, he was certainly rivaled the giant ape as one of the most memorable parts of this film. Now, who knew the child of satellite engineers would settle for a career in the world of Hollywood? A once rebellious California teen who once smoked oregano to try and get high. Well, he would one day receive his very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I, got, I made it! I'm officially, I have made it. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael McCrudden documenting the life and career of Mr. Jack Black prior to fame. Here for you, of course, some before they're famous. Now this video is long overdue, but seeing as Jack Black has gotten himself on YouTube and has exploded like an atomic bomb, well, we decided we should certainly get this video done. Now we've done plenty of other actors and comedians. In fact, we have an entire playlist dedicated to them. On there, you'll find like Will Ferrell, Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey, tons of legends. Be sure to check that out. Let us know who's next in the comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Come on, Chuck, don't do this. Somebody's coming, let's get out of here. Jack Black was born Thomas Jacob Black on August 28, 1969 in Santa Monica, California. He was raised in nearby Hermosa Beach. Now Jack's father, Thomas William Black, is said to be of English, Irish, and German with some ancestors arriving to the US by way of Canada. Go figure. As for his mother, Will Judith Love Cohen is a Brooklyn native whose parents were reportedly Jewish immigrants from Russia. Now his dad, Thomas, he converted to Judaism after meeting Judith. Now since Jack considers himself an atheist, well many are surprised by his Jewish roots. My father was born Protestant. Right. My mother was born a Jew, which makes me full Jew, yes. according to the Jews. <laughs> Jack stated in that very podcast that he did indeed have a bar mitzvah, but was disappointed to receive mediocre gifts, like socks. This is a wonderful project. We took this telescope and moved it 
up above the Earth's atmosphere. Like I said in the intro, both of Jack's parents are satellite engineers. Aside from dabbling in writing, Judith, she worked on the Hubble telescope. Jack's older half-brother Neil from Judith's prior marriage is a computer scientist and an engineer. So with him, the apple, it didn't fall far from the tree. But with Jack, what the hell did they get? All four human-made spacecraft that have left the solar system were built by us at our facility in California, where I'm based. Jack enjoyed the outdoors as a young boy. He was even involved in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts as a child. I didn't reach the level of Eagle Scout, and I do plan on doing that. I want to <laughs> go back. <laughs> You can go back and get that later, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Now, Jack has two older siblings, his sister Rachel, as well as a brother Howard. His brother Howard proved to have a tremendous influence on him as a young age. Jack was already in love with rock music after being introduced to the band The Who after watching Jack Nicholson sing Go to the Mirror in the film Tommy at the age of 10. Howard took him to a concert at the age of 11, a memory he cherishes. Now, Howard, he tragically passed away from AIDS in 1989 when he was only 31 years old. And as you can imagine, well, this death, it was a heavy blow to his entire family. Now, Jack's family turmoil, it began long before that. Now, believe it or not, the performer's hypnotizing energy and hilarious on-screen antics, well, they mask a much dark and torturous past. His parents, Judith and Thomas, they divorced when he was only 10. And as a result, well, Jack, he fell into a downward spiral. Moving to the Los Angeles suburbs of Culver City with his dad, well, Jack recalled his troubled years in junior high, hanging out with a group of stoner kids. He even said that one of them, well, they wanted to kill him. That's when I did acid for the first time. I fell in with some rough dudes and did a lot of blow, a lot of cocaine. Then I got taken out of the public school system and put into a private school for troubled youths. After that, I was fortunate enough to get into a great school in Santa Monica called Crossroads. That really turned my shit around. Jack would eventually find help from a school therapist who helped him shake heavy drugs. He stated, I spilled my guts telling him I felt guilty about stealing from my mom to get money for cocaine. I cried like a baby. It was a huge release and a huge relief. I left feeling euphoric. Like an enormous weight had been lifted from me, it changed me. Well, Jack can't recall the exact age he first smoked pot, it seems to have been an aspiration of his since the age of 10. He and his buddies stole some oregano from his mom's kitchen and smoked it up on the roof. Needless to say, well, he didn't feel much. Oh, them reckless kids. First, you're chilling on the roof, puffing oregano, thinking you're invincible. And you know what comes next, right? Crap with me, bro. A natural performer, Jack did his first commercial at the age of 13 after signing to the Jack Rose Agency on Sunset Boulevard. The commercial in question was the Atari game Pitfall. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Jack had the idea in his head that if he landed one acting role, well, he would gain popularity in school. Not only did he fail at gaining attention, but according to a quote from the actor regarding his childhood, he actually suffered from low self-esteem. He stated, Never for a second did I think of myself as the sexiest guy in the world. When I was a kid, I thought I was the strongest man in the world, then the fastest runner, and then the smartest person in the world. One by one, my delusions got shut down. Now I just see myself as the lamest guy in the world. With her higher sober, the young teen would still be acting out in school. Describing himself as a class clown, Jack would shamelessly do whatever he could in order to get a laugh from fellow students. It was around this time he met Tanya Hayden, the woman he would eventually call his wife. But due to his shyness as a teen, well, he was too scared to talk to her and eventually worked up the courage to ask her out on a date only 15 years later. Jack reportedly excelled in theater while at Crossroads, attending UCLA after graduation. He joined a theater group known as the Actors Gang. It was here they gained the attention of Tim Robbins, a man you may know from a little movie called The Shawshank Redemption. Now Tim, who was a UCLA alum himself, he decided to take the gang across the pond to work their magic at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is out in Scotland. Eventually, they made their way to NYC, and the actors gang, well, they received negative reviews from theater critics. Oh, them New York City snobs. Jack eventually dropped out of UCLA to focus solely on his acting career. As it turns out, Tim Robbins was working on his directorial debut with a satirical comedy called Bob Roberts where there he cast a 22-year-old Jack in the role of Roger Davis. 
and this was Jack's feature film debut. This is my son, Roger. Hi, Roger. Nice to meet you, sir. We got all the album. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hey. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Career-wise, the 90s turned out to be quite friendly to the actor. He earned several bit parts in films like Airborne, The NeverEnding Story 3, Demolition Man, Waterworld, The Cable Guy, and Enemy of the State. He even had the honor of being murdered by Bruce Willis in 1997's The Jackal. Hey, I give up. Jack was getting more than his fair share of supporting character roles, but still had not landed a part that would prove him as the talent he knew he was. While continuing to work as an actor, he also performed as part of the comedic rock duo Tenacious D. He and fellow actors gang alum Kyle Gass, they met back in 1986. Now Kyle was the actor gang's lead musician at the time, and he states that he initially felt threatened by Jack's talent. Their rivalry soon turned into a friendship after the two performers bonded on the road with Tim Robbins. Now Jack, he eventually made a deal with Kyle. If Kyle taught him how to play the guitar, Jack would buy him food from his favorite fast food joint. And that turned out to be Jack in the Box. Who are you? Name's Kyle Gass. Kyle Gass. Dude, will you just teach me that one thing that you did where you're like, Ryan, I'm not giving free guitar lessons today. Why don't you stand over there? Now the two would soon be playing around Los Angeles, but were partial to one venue known as Al's Bar on Hewitt Street and Traction Avenue not far from the city's Skid Row. Now one night after getting off stage, they met a fan named David Cross, who himself was looking to break into the biz. You guys are rad. Come uh, open for our thing. We do a thing called Mr. Show Live. And we're like, oh yeah, let's do it. It was David Cross and his partner, Bob Odenkirk, who in 1997 cast Jack Black as a series regular on their comedy program, Mr. Show, where he would take part in various sketches. Sorry, my car broke down. Might I spend the night? Yes, you can. Step this way, ride this way, see my house. He kept grinding away with music and acting, landing his first leading role in a romantic comedy called High Fidelity. Starring alongside John Cusack, well, Jack, he portrayed Barry, Cusack's employee at a Chicago record shop. Here's the thing. I made that tape special for today. My special Monday morning tape for you. Special! What's Monday afternoon, you should get out of bed earlier. Come on, dude. As for the rest of the story, well, we're gonna wrap this one up here because, of course, this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCredden. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. Now, if you're a fan of the actors and old Hollywood, well, there's an entire playlist of actors and comedians you can find, well, probably right below me right now. My name is Mike McCredden. We're making more videos. No one watches till the end. See you guys in another video. Boom!